show is brought to you by Coo Cullen Sportswear. Check out their website for great deals on teamwear on www.cucullensportswear.com or the Coo Cullen Sportswear Facebook page. Uh, joined by Finian Hanley now to preview the two All Ireland semi finals. But Finian, um, before we get into it, there's quite a lot of players in the last few days retiring. Um, Paul Kerrigan, uh, Gordon Kelly from Clare, the Cribbins, um, a lot of players retiring from the game this week. Yeah, I saw that actually. Um, it was interesting, you know, like to, to, to think that those lads were at the age in their careers that they were finishing up. Uh, I know, well, obviously, I suppose like Paul Kerrigan was kind of um, he was after me, but he, you know, he he went on won the All Ireland, but, but that's very early in his career, you know, in 2010, and now now it's 10 years later, which which has just kind of happened, you know, quite quickly. Obviously, I think with all the Dublin dominance, you know, years have passed for for guys um, within these teams, you know, Clare, obviously, you know, Leinster have been in in the shadows because of, of because of Dublin, so. Um, you know, like serious footballers, all of these guys, obviously Paul Kerrigan, like like a massive, you know, great, 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 great accolades, great, you know, with the All-Ireland, a couple of leagues and stuff like that, you know, you know, achieved with his club and everything. So, um, you know, international rules and all that as well. I think, you know, those guys, Gordon Kelly as well, long serving corner back, Christ, you know, to be playing in, in two, two, three or four. Uh, Age. Uh, look, it's it's kind of a sign of the times. Maybe these guys are still fit and ready, but it's the effort and commitment that they're probably looking, saying, "Look, you know, where's the where's the next thing?" You know, Paul Kerrigan will be thinking, you know, a lot of young guys coming through. We're moving on. Uh, my time is done. I was a sub this year, or whatever it is, and probably you know the rest are just thinking the Cribbins and the the Cribbins and, and Tommy Mulick in in Kildare are thinking. Dublin are there is it worth throwing my hat in the ring for the next couple of years to see where we go you know are, are we going places that can compete in the top table and maybe they're thinking now it's time to, to hang up the boots and there's too much demand or there's huge demand on players nowadays so it's a huge decision to say you're playing on so look fair play to them and uh, you know they've obviously made this they've thought about this decision after such a long time and even manager wise uh, Tony McEntee going to Sligo is quite a shock really yeah. with Sligo. <laughs> Um, but Mickey Headcount allowed has to be the craziest one, just the craziest management manager like going to another county. I'd say ever in Gaelic football. Yeah, the the, the McEntee one is funny. Like Sligo, like you know, the, the couple of schools titles and stuff up there. But like to be thinking that they're probably that they're now we don't know what's happening in Sligo. We we haven't seen much or or any of any of them this year. Yeah. Uh, like, are the players coming? Is he just going there to learn his trade? You know, to get a foot in the ladder with a view to heading back. You know, is Geezer staying in, in Armagh uh, for another year, and is is, is McAdee looking to do a year, get the experience, and head back up there? You know, it's probably a premeditated. I would think maybe not. Maybe he sees potential. I, I don't know how he would, but um, you know, it's a difficult job to be heading into. Um, um, in Sligo, I would think they're they're quite young and they're a few years away from competing with Galway and Mayo. Um, Mickey Hart, yeah, Jesus, it's uh, <laughs> um, the guy loves football. He obviously wants to stay in football. He's he's been so long with 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 succeeding in Tyrone. You know, like by successful, I mean obviously they won this in the in the knowledge, but in the last ten years they've been in semi-finals, you know, final here and there. Um, Quarterfinals. They've been competing, you know. They've been in Division One for most of it as well. So, uh, heading to Loud, smallest county in the country. Uh, uh, players coming? Does he know there's good players coming? I know Aidan O'Rourke. It's, it's, it's a strange one to, to be going there for three years. Maybe he wants to try and do something with another team that he's always planned to do. But the fact that he was with own for, for so long uh, and so successful. You know, maybe up to the top of Division Four, three, or he sees that. Obviously, that's that's a huge success for a county like Loud, and he sees that he thinks he's able to get them there. He's brought in a good backroom team. He's got oceans of experience. So, um, good luck to him. Fair play to him. He must he must really really love. 
the game, yeah. And um, as well uh, with Kerry, there's been a lot of rumours, I suppose, with the danger of WhatsApp that Peter Keane has been called out, that there was trouble in the camp. But it's not true at all. But, like, it's amazing even the stuff that can go around on WhatsApp that is just totally rubbish within Gaelic football. Yeah, um, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know how much rubbish it is, to be honest, Paul. I, I, uh, there's no smoke without fire. Uh, there's something there. There's definitely something there. We've seen it in loads of camps, you know. We've seen it in my time playing. There's all this rumblings and stuff. People say, Irish, that's rubbish. But it turns out then that there was some truth to it. So I don't think it's completely rubbish, to be honest. Um, um, you know, there's... there's Is, is probably all rubbish and, and talking about individual players overly ex, overly excited or overly happy with the setup you know questions will be asked and look, we've been in those positions too many times and had a big loss or an unexpected loss or losses to smaller county stuff and then you know all the questions are asked and the first person you're asking everyone asks the questions obviously the manager you know why was this lad playing why, why weren't you know uh, and then and that seeps into teams, you know, by hook or by crook, that's what happens. It seeps into team bad when teams are not really fit enough, you know, maybe. And, and and that's the nature of the beast. Young guys will question other people and they find it very hard to look at themselves and say, oh, sure, that was my fault and it was our fault and take it on the chin. Um, there's a mix and carry at the minute where you've got the likes of the lads that people, the old Peter Crowley and you've got Paul Ganey and... And 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 a few, and David Moore and a few of the older guys. So it's hard to know. You know, look, the WhatsApp and stuff going around about Paul Gaines stuff is probably like I would say that's rubbish. But are they entirely happy uh, with the setup? Are they entirely happy? Players, uh, backroom staff, management have county board assets. Absolutely, they have. So there's 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 something there. It's probably not what it's been made out to be, but there's there's definitely something happening down. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. Inter- it'll be interesting to see, but I suppose the all in semi-final on Saturday, great to see Cavan win and uh, those are titled the scenes, but coming up against Dublin and Crow Park on Saturday at half five. I know it was great to see them win it, but is it bad now because this Dublin Cavan game could just easily be even like the Leicester final? Yeah, it could. It could be. Um, look, Dublin aren't going to let this slip. Not going to look at this with you know one eye on anything else. They're going to see. They're going to see a handy six in a row here. Really, you know. Obviously, it should be getting harder for them. Maybe, uh, you know. So, 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 is it going to be the easiest? You know, it's, it's kind of looking like it. But, um, you know, to be the easiest opposition they're playing in the semi final uh, and have no disrespect. Of Dublin, they're nowhere near the level, you know. And they've beaten teams this year, and they've been great, and they've been real story of the of the championship. But you know, what's the true Dublin? What's the true Cavan? You know, we know the true Dublin. Do we know the real Cavan? Are they the Cavan that was getting slaughtered by, by Monaghan and Down? And they came back and they even try that on on, on Saturday. The Dubs are just going to smother you. Um, because they're all playing for places for this final, Christmas final, you know, against Mayo. They, they'll all want to be in, so um, it's, it's great that Kevin are there, it'd be great excitement and everything like that, but look, it's not going to, It's you know, they could put it up to them, you know, for for for, for a while, but uh, eventually it's, it's a 10-point game, isn't it? I'm being, I'm being, uh, I might be, be, you know, I might be, the and that's all right. Uh, it's it's you know, Kevin has some really good players, really exciting players. You know, they've really lit up the championship, but look, Dublin are a machine not to be missed. It's, the final is a different story, and we we'll probably get onto that. But uh, um, Saturday, it's, it's it's a foregone conclusion, unfortunately. Yeah, and like you're saying that midfield they need to break even, so they're probably going to have to put Thomas Galligan out there with Garrows McKinnon to have any. I suppose hope of winning primary possession, but then you're saying Dublin are vulnerable if they are vulnerable at all. It's always talked about the full back line. You probably need to throw one of them into the forward line, but they probably won't be able to afford like 
how do they approach this game tactically? Because we see Mead push up and then Conor Callan starts winning Manx around the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. And look, they're going to figure it out. Dublin are going to figure it out in the kickouts if they put two big men around the middle. They'll bypass that or they'll, they'll, they'll hit. They'll go to James and they'll go to John Small. All these guys are comfortable. You don't have to be six foot five not to play in midfield. All these guys can catch ball. But as you said, Connor can come out and catch three or four in a row. So look, they'll bypass that. How do you have an approach? How would you approach going to play Dublin and Grove Park and all Ireland semi final? Look, you, you try and retrieve. I suppose you're working your own kickouts. You try and retrieve your own kickouts as much as you can. Now they'll push up in there, but you just come up with some sort of strategy. Your, you know, your Smiths, your Fortunes, your Port Warner are getting on the ball with your kickouts and, and, and you know, everyone's moving just to get possession and keep it. And, and, and to be honest, I'd bypass the midfield. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go into that, you know, trying not to kick it out too long um, where, where, where Dublin might beat you on breaks. I'd, I'd just try and retain possession as much as you can. And, and I agree with you. I think the best strategy would be to put the big guys up front, um, um, you know, maybe at the start or at some period in the game, Put Gallagher and McKiernan up front, up top, and have someone, you know, washing Kieran or someone sweeping in around and trying to get on a few breaks. Ask questions of them. Um, ask questions. Ask questions of the, of the full back line. You know, as we said before, every full back line is is vulnerable under um, every full back line is vulnerable under high ball at times. Every, the full back line is vulnerable because that's the game is played and mentally played. You know, it's it's get it to the forwards and they score. Um, so sometimes the ball coming in is poor, uh, and that suits you as well. You know, you know that can suit a full back line. But look, get the big guys in, and you know, that's what what I hope Captain might do on on Saturday. Something different, but, uh, and then retain possession and 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 mind it as best you can. And if Kevin. Do you just sit back and let them have the kick out, or do you split some way? Yeah, good question. I suppose, look, you can't give them the ball, but they're going to get the ball. They're going to get the ball enough times, and their their, their efficiency is un, unbelievable, you know? Like, once, like, the likes of Kieran and Kenny or Brian Fenton get it around the middle, they stop, you know, cabin brings bodies back, they'll get, get the ball to the 40, the 40 and stop, the hand will go up the you know there'll be about five different or six different sequences within that sequence and then the guy will come on the loop and kick it over the bar it's very hard to defend again it's because they're so in sync they all yeah look Cluxon's going to figure it out so you're probably better off stepping off I wouldn't step off too much you know, I get our full forward body drop them the half hour line into midfield I wouldn't just have everyone running back into their own half but keep a thread up there you know, because Galligan and McKeer are in, you know, on a, on a merchant or something like that, slow as much as they can, you know. So that's 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 where you go. But uh, either way, you don't want to push up too high because if Cluxon gets one over the top, one over the top, O'Callaghan, Kilkenny, Scully, these guys, you know, they're going for goals. And, that, and, and I hope it's not too early, you know, because if they get a goal in the first five or ten minutes, uh, it's going to be a long evening. Uh, for everybody. <laughs> yeah, and Johnny go over below a pair, but like these Kevin Young lads, like Paul Mannion hasn't started yet, which is just so scary. And he'll probably come in this week and maybe ahead of Paddy Small and like Rock inside, Kilkenny inside. Like if Dublin go direct and start pumping ball in, like Jason McLaughlin and Luke Fortune are excellent defenders, but they haven't really come up against this. No, no, and and that's the worry because we're talking about we're talking about Kevin and how they might approach it and putting big guys in there. But like Kieran Kilkenny is able to take the ball anyway at all. You know, you can kick it to him low, you can have pass him. But like you know, he's as good as anyone in the air in the country. Um, so if they start launching ball in on top of him and he starts catching marks, um, same with Dean Rock. Dean is quite tall as well. And obviously O'Callaghan, we've seen what he can do from the kick out. So look, the, you know, the huge armory. And then you're talking about Paul Manion, one of the best footballers forwards ever to play the game. <laughs> and uh, he hasn't kicked the ball yet. So 
Um, yeah, look, it's it's it's, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be tough, but you'd hope that the, the you know the likes of Fortune and Faulkner and these guys just go out and enjoy it. You know, just go out and you know take the shackles off. Don't try and mark, you know, overthink marking. You know, step out in front. You know, let them try and kick it over your head. And if they get that, you know, you know, obviously they're able to do it, but they're not going to be able to do that all the time. So let them try and kick it over your head. Step out in front, get a hand across, you know, uh, and try and be positive in that regard because it cuts off the space. And look, Dublin might have an off day with their kick passing or whatever it is. They they don't tend to have too many because they're they play such high percentages. But um, um, yeah, look, you'd you'd hope that that the the the, the cabin backs would just tear into it, you know, go for it, you know, they're they're all physically able. Uh, and they wouldn't fear it too much, but with the forward line Dublin have and the way they're playing at the minute, it's 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 uh, it's the dizziness of of that unit and the movement, uh, the dizziness that'll cause the 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 cabin players, you know, after one or two of those, then um, you, you know they'll be out on their feet, and and if they are, then it's 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 ominous, unfortunately. Would you throw Clegg and Faulkner back into the full back line with the danger that's there in the forward line? Yeah, I, I think Clark will probably sweep around. Um, he'll probably he'll probably be in around there. Uh, you know, Kieran Brady, they'll have Brady back. You know, they'll have like they'll they'll pro- they'll drop their half forward line deep, obviously, and try and cut off space. So so what they're probably better off doing is putting, you know, having their full back line marking and having two sweepers, you know, dropping inside and then let the wing forwards of of the cabin wing forwards pick up the the um the Dublin wing forward. So like you want the cabin wing forwards picking up Scully um, and whoever's on the other side, um, Kilkenny or whoever it is, and let them pick them up and let the other two drop in deep in front. So just cut out that ball inside. But what I think the cabin backs need to do is I think they need to obviously just, or try and do is play zonal as much as possible because what happens more often than not is if you're marking men, you know, Dean Rock's going to run, but sure he's no interest in getting the ball for another three minutes in the sequence of play. So, you know, let him off, let him out to the side and let someone else out there deal with him. So I think, I hope that what they've done in training over the last couple of weeks is they've kept a zone in play where they're going to keep two bodies in front of that D, in front of their full back line at all time. And they're not going to be picking up too many men coming in around. They're just going to be stuck there to stop that goal threat and that the full back line are going to let a, a rock or an Ocala, and when he runs out to the sideline, let him off out there. If he kicks it from there, all well and good. Um, but not to let them have this you know, this D and own the D and, and be able to kick scores from 21 metres out because, you know, if they start doing that, then 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 it's curtains. And it'll save a lot of energy for the, the cabin backs too. And Danny, like talking about cabin Dublin here, um, it's a huge task for cabin, but like some of the moves Desi Farrell has even made, McDay, the wing back, Conor Callum further out, Kilkenny inside, it's just scary stuff for cabin, you think? Yeah, well, I've actually, funny, I've... Um, I've been doing, I've been late doing, a bit like this phone call, a bit late getting getting to the table. But uh, uh, I read a column by Irish News, and I just, I think, Kavanaugh and Dreamland, they're in real bonus territory for for themselves at the minute. You know, I didn't give them, I didn't give them really a much of a chance against Donegal, and they were absolutely brilliant and and very worthy champions. Um, but they're meeting something totally different in in Dublin, where there won't be a lot of uh, the sentiment of the Ulster final will, will have already been blown over, and it's one thing putting long direct balls into a, the athletic ground in a very tight enclosed field. I know Finian probably will will have played in the athletic grounds. It's a tighter field. It's a smaller field. Mm. There's a big difference between doing that and landing long diagonal balls into Croke Park, into a square in Croke Park, far far bigger space. Um, Dublin have have seen stuff like that before and mopped it out quite comfortably, um, and that levels of ac- accuracy that it takes an organisation uh, for for Cavan to carry out that that one particular tactic, if they were to do it, uh, which they got a lot of joy out of, is a completely different thing in Croke Park. So, yes, um, Cavan are totally up against it. I, you know, if you could put your house on anything. You put your house on a Dublin win, and I know there has been a year of of, of results that probably against normal in the norms of of Gaelic football. But I actually don't believe that the Tipperary beating Cork was a massive shock. I think Tipperary well well were well worth it, and 
and Kerry had a real bad day and Cork had a real good one on them. But Cavan to beat Dublin, I just cannot see it. Dublin are ruthless. And Kieran Kilkenny playing out of his skin. Brian Fenton playing out of his skin. Their defence is very strong. Kieran Kilkenny, for me, Cavan will need a double or triple mark him um, on, on occasion. And then that just frees up somebody else somewhere else. So uh, I, I, I just... It's hard to see anybody other than Dublin winning by seven or eight points, I would think, set up a, a, a tie with Mayo. And the, the work rate from Dublin this year, it almost looks nearly better, I'd say, than Nashville. Like Caddy Small the last day, running back to the corner back line, forcing a turnover. And like John Small as well, we talked about it. John Small is probably one of the most underrated defenders as well. Like, and if if they have the work rate at the level, do you think they're just going to swarm Cavan every time, Finney? Well, yeah, you know, Dublin, and I suppose Finney will be aware of this, Dublin don't really care who they play. Their processes don't change. Mm. And I suppose it's like, not, a, not unlike Man City, not unlike Liverpool. You know, personnel come in and out. Any of those great teams, All Blacks, the, the processes don't change. And that's what Dublin have really got down to a T. The management has changed, but the transition has been pretty seamless. And you can't see anything other than a Dublin win because we've been here before. We've seen teams coming out of Connacht, Mayo, and Galway at, 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 at one point were close to, you know, given a National League game and all the rest, the semi final of an All Ireland on the, their own Dublin close for, for a half and played really well. Uh, coming out of Ulster, we've seen Tyrone coming over uh, over the border and, and seeing that they, they had a chance of beating this Dublin. And Dublin have always answered that question, tactically and every every other way. So, you know, Cavan are in bonus territory and if they make it a really competitive game, I think that's the best that, that, that the neutral can hope for, make it really competitive. But... And I can understand why people would want to take the dubs out of Croke Park as well. Yes, that argument where the best players always want to play in Croke Park, I understand that in years gone by. But this isn't a normal Dublin side. And, you know, taking it out to Navan or taking it to somewhere else would have narrowed the gap a wee bit. Uh, Dublin still would have won, but uh, it narrows the gap. And it gives Cavan that wee bit of chance tactically to go long, go direct, put Cluxon under pressure, put the full-back line under pressure. But in Croke Park, given their history, given this team, you know, Dublin have their process. And it doesn't matter who comes up against it, they will professionally go about it ruthlessly. And uh, I can't see anything other than them putting Calvin to the sword and putting them away early. Did they miss a trick there, do you think, Finney, not moving the game out of Crow Park? <laughs> yeah, look, we're clutching now, really, aren't we? But uh, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it would have, look, it would have, you know, it's somewhere, it would have been great for the town or great for the, you know, it would have been great for Cavan. Obviously, it would have been smaller and, uh, you know, tighter and it would have been less flap around Dublin, you know, if you, had an, if you were in a Navin or, you know, a Levitt Grounds or somewhere like that where it was just a bit, that bit more, you know, different for 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 the, for the Dublin players. You know, Hello there. they would they would they would have figured it out, and they would have um and they would have um still or they would they would have still beaten them. Um, I don't think they missed a massive trick. It, it you know, Kevin will be happy get to an All Ireland semi final, uh, in Crow Park. They'll be they'll be happy enough to play there, like because I don't think they know what's happening. They know the story, and they know how difficult it's going to be. So so look, are they going to have you know? Is it going to be ten points in Crow Park? It'd be eight points in the in in Navin. so you know it, it, a win is a win, and they're still going to beat whatever spread is in it and stuff like that against most teams. They've done it against me. They've done it against they've done it against everyone this year, anyhow. You know, so um, so yeah. So look, it, they haven't missed a huge trick. Look, like is it going to change over the next few years? Or maybe they'll have a Super Eights game change to an away ground, but you know, predominantly the games are going to be in Crow Park. That's just the way it is. That it's the National Stadium. It's in Dublin. Um, uh, I'd like to see some of their league games been played in in Parnell Park. I think that 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 should change. I think that you know Parnell Park's a fine stadium, um, and there's enough. 
uh, they don't need to be going into Crow Park because there's only 20,000 people at these league games in Crow Park anyway. It's a waste of time. So uh, I'd like to see that change. But uh, uh, yeah, look, you know, Cavan to get it out of Crow Park Dublin and still still figure it out. And they'll still whip anybody, you know, if they were coming over to Pierce Stadium in a championship match. They've been in Pierce Stadium and they've been up in, you know, in the past. They've been down in Cork. They've been in Kerry, you know, during the league when they're trying players out and they're not fit because they're only back from B- Bermuda or... Las Vegas or whatever, you know what I mean. But uh, this is championship, uh, the boy, and they're after getting five months of arrest for COVID, so they're absolutely ravenous now at this stage. And and they play it up in the Phoenix Park or they play it in O'Connell Street. I don't think they care. They're, the, they're the, too well drilled. Well, well, you're 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 bang on, Faye. And the th- the thing about it is, the players as as a player, all I've done about in my whole life was playing in Coke Park. You want to play in Coke Park, and for these Calvin lads, this isn't. The, the playing outside the Coke Park thing was a neutral thing. It was a neutral supporters because mm. we are clutching a wee bit to try and see. We, we all want a competitive. Nobody wants an uncompetitive championship. Nobody wants that. Ex-players, fans, and I doubt even Dublin, you know, in the back of their mind, they want to be tested too. Uh, they're, they're an all-time, they're one of the all-time great teams of, of the GA. They want to be tested too. But at the minute, there's very few teams out there, and you've seen with Meath, the, the, the annihilation that was the Leinster Championship totally rolled over and this is this is the big issue now that's facing the game. The shadow that Dublin are casting now across the country is massive because totally overfunded. They are, the resource, and it's not the players' fault, it's not the Dublin players' fault or the management. This is a, an obsession that the J, that the, the Crow Park had about funding Dublin GAA from 2003 and all the resources that went into after that. So I I would say that there was a neutral issue about getting them out of Crook Park so they could make it more competitive, the game. The players will want to, as as always, the players will want to um, uh, the players will want to play in Crook Park and this is the thing. They, they There was no request put in because the players wanted, wanted to do that. So, you know, we are clutching to try and get it more neutral. As the players, players, we, we want to play in Coke Park, but 10 minutes in or 15 minutes in, when there's 10 points in it, Coke Park will be the loneliest place in the world, let me tell you. So it might be any notion players have and any good feeling out the door after, mm. after that, because I've been on the receiving end of a few of a few beatings there as well. And, and it's a very tough place to be when, when you are getting beaten, you know? So um, listen, we'll see, but unfortunately, history would say that, that it's going to be Dublin, you know. And being finally on the Dublin Cavan game, Dublin's purple patch, we've seen it when they get a run on a team like it's 1-9, it's 1-10 and now there's reports that Jack McCaffrey was back training with Dublin on Saturday and how true that is. Oh, right. I didn't hear that. Oh, Christ. Um <laughs> Um, all right, yeah, that's um, yeah. Look, if it, it's uh, I it'll be I, I would be wondering why Jack is back, or how he's back, or, or what's the plan there. You know, um, um, would Jim Gavin have taken him back? I, I don't know. Um, given they're going so well, like do do they not draw a line and say, look, sure, you know, you know, tip out, or does you know, is that showing that Desi Farrell needs to get his Ireland under his belt early? And you know, keep this keep this show on the road. Um, uh, you know, and a little bit of panic to say, look, we have to get this done by hook or by crook the first year, and then I can start, you know, picking and choosing who I want in and who I want out or whatever. And and maybe saying to a Jack McCaffrey in a year's time after I, he has his All Ireland under his belt, look, Jack, you know, you went away this year. We'll we'll we we'll, we've Robbie McDade and we have these guys, so we'll uh, you can you can send in your application form for for twenty twenty two or whatever it is, but. Uh, um, yeah, look, that's a strange one. If look, we know what Jack McCaffrey is and has done and everything, um, and you know, sight of him on the pitch on on Saturday evening is going to be uh, <laughs> be great for us uh, to see. Um, but um, no, no, it's not going to be nice for 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 Cavan. You know, as you say, they're scoring one one seven one eight without reply, and and when they sniff it, they go through it. I don't know if there's a signal or whatever, but they kind of they can see weaknesses and defenses, and they can pick purple patches out. You know, end of the first half, start of the second half, where they just go for the juggler, um, 
So you need one of them to go away from them. You need, you know, a, go- a goal chance or two early in the second half in the third quarter to to hit the post or be missed, um, be saved by the goalie or, you know, a couple of easy shots go into a goalie's hand where Cavan get the ball back and go up and win a free or something. That's what you need to see. But they're so ruthless, they don't t- tend to do that. But, you know, here's hoping that maybe, you know, a goal chance, you know, that own Merchant had in the All-Ireland final last year or something like that is missed. And then, you know, you're still in the game. So that's 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 what we'd be hoping for. But from picking out purple patches, they're they're very good at it and they're so controlled. And they have so many leaders all over the pitch. Um it's 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 very difficult to stop. You would have to think that Gavin will need to score goals and they'll need to score goals early. Like Mees had a chance in the first two or three minutes of the Leinster final and they never took it. They'd actually two chance they'd one really good chance and had a half chance and they took neither. And Dublin went down and scored. And those wee things chip it away at a player's confidence in the game, in a final. They will, they will come back to haunt you. And the br- brilliance about it, when you look at, when you brings about this Dublin team and this panel and everybody's come in and everybody's left and the revolving door nature of it, and the cafe game is, it's as simple of that. Dublin haven't been beaten Crow Park in a championship game since 2014, and we're sitting now going into 2021. You know, the, the, the stats and everything else. Brian Fenton's never been beat in a championship match in, in, in that time. Like, that's, that's astonishing to say. When you say that, like, like, and we're now sitting, I know 2014 doesn't seem six years ago, and now we're going into 2021. It's really astonishing what's been achieved here. Um, and, you know, Tony Gall and McGuinness was the last team to outwit, outwit Jim Gavin, and Jim Gavin was in his first year. He seen that there was weaknesses over the top of the Dublin uh, midfield, and they were high pressing, and he exposed them. But Donegal took their goal chances ruthlessly that day, and that took them over the line. If Calvin don't take every goal chance that they have, they'll be wiped off the map at Cook Park. They'll be wiped out. And the thing about it is, do Dublin have any weaknesses like that compared to 2014? I don't see too many weaknesses. Because they're so strong at the back, they're so organised and stuff like that. What happened in 2014 never happened again. So this is why I think every team's beatable, don't get me wrong. But Dublin's as close to unbeatable at this level as you can get. And I'll tell you what, Mayo very nearly came to beating that great Mayo town. I would say, yes, they never won in All-Ireland. But, geez, they were very, very close. And that was a really strong. Any other era, Mayo would have had maybe arguably one or two All-Irelands. Um, so I think you have to give credit out west to what the Horn and, and the other guys Rochford did achieve and yes it wasn't in silverware but it was damn close but Dublin they've just gone to an, another level and maintained their level while the other teams maybe have, have pulled back a wee bit so you know goal chances are going to be massive for Calvin they need to take them um, and if they don't take them it's just going to be wiped out yeah, probably going to be double scores in this one, unfortunately. But a game that could be go right down to the wire, Mayo tip the in 2016 in the semi final. And you'd have to say, I suppose both teams have changed a lot, but with tip, they've probably been stronger since 2016, um, Finney. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they did a bit of a lull after that, you know. They, I thought they'd kick on a bit better after getting to the All Ireland semi final that year. You know, they were they were brilliant that year, um, uh, and then kind of a bit of a lull, you know, kind of down, you know, lower league places and stuff like that. They didn't really overly kick on, uh, but but you know, this year again, you know, they they've been brilliant. Um, they've been brilliant. Uh, no, I I say they've been brilliant, but they were brilliant in the Munster final. But you have to look back to Limerick. You know, Limerick Division Four teams. Limerick, you know, could have could have beaten Tipperary. You know, it took Connor Sweeney to to kick an outstational score. Um, so what what are Tip? They're 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 inconsistent. They're hot and cold. They have good players, but are they fully set on how they want to play? Are they fully set on on what they have? I don't know. Are they like? Are are we going to see Tip after this build on this now and 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 really start getting players in and having a structure and and trying to move up the league table, you know, as much as they can. Are, are we going to see that? Yeah, it, it, it's hard to know because there's so many other teams like Tip with, with good players, but, you know, not a huge amount of substance. So, so look, Mayo, Mayo have come this year 
uh, I, I, I'm really interested in Mayo because I think Mayo are a team that's coming. Horn has found some really, really good players. He's mixed youth and experience. He's brought back. You know, he's got, got, got reserves there. You know, huge experience on the bench. Keith Higgins and the like. Um, he's found a lot of players, really, really good players. You're talking about like potential all-star footballers is what he's found making their debuts. Um, so, so he's very comfortable. Um, the only thing with Mayo is they're not going to hammer tip. They don't hammer anyone Mayo. They're just kind of, you know, they're they're, they're kind of nice. Uh, th- this new Mayo team, they're, they you know even Leitrim, you know they beat them well, but they could have beaten them by more. Ross Common, you know, always four or five points ahead, but. You know, they're never going to, you know, and I know they've beaten Galway in the league, but in the championship, they kind of go into wars or whatever it is, and they're a real grafter team and real running team. So, um, I, I look, I think Mayo, the only team that can beat Dublin is Mayo um, in the country, in my eyes. I think they have no care in the world for Dublin, as you mentioned there, Paul. They uh, or Danny, sorry, you went to, they went to the well with Mayo, with Dublin, um, you know, possibly, you know could have beaten them on, on one or two occasions. So they don't care for Dublin, even though they haven't won. They're one of the best teams of all time, Mayo, even though they haven't won the All-Ireland because of what they've done. And, you know, they'll front up against Dublin in a couple of weeks' time if they get over this. I think they'll get over this. They won't hammer Tipperary, but I think they'll they'll be, you know, three, four, five points better. I just think, you know, Tipperary have Sweeney and Quinn Levin, but the best team in the country to deal with those two players or any players is Mayo because they've got such good backs. You know, their backs against Galway the last day, brilliant early on when there was chances. Chris Barrett, you know, Oshin Mullen has come, McLaughlin, you know, re- you know, and they're tackling all over the pitch is brilliant. So, like, what, what they won't want is Sweeney getting the ball in his hands. And I don't think they'll let him because Barrett will play from the front, will cut that out. You know, when he comes on the loop, they'll have two men on him. Horn will have his homework done. So, um, an interesting game, a more interesting game than the other one, but... I think I think I think this Mayo team are are, are are coming nicely. They'll have loads to improve on from the Galway game, which they'll be happy with. And I think uh, yeah, Christmas week they'll give a right good good rattle to the Dubs and a bit of bad weather and all that. You never know. Matter of things have happened this year, Paul. You know. <laughs> and the tip forwards, you think really what Mayo are going to do here, and um, Danny is just. Lee Keegan, Paddy Durkin, or even Oshie Mullen, they're, they're just going to attack, 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 and have Quinlan and Sweeney chasing after them. You would, you would think so. You would think so. Um, they have that experience, Mayo, of of dealing with boards. Connor Sweeney, six of them plus another, arguably four or five of Connor Sweeney's and Quinlan's coming off the bench against Dublin. They'll be able to go to. Uh, they'll be able to go. They'll be, Mayo all seem to be able to lift themselves. Um, for Dublin, uh, the question, question this Mayo team was: they're expected to beat Tip, uh, and can can they live up to the expectations that everybody places on them, their own fans themselves, um, and the neutral? Because arguably, you know, for the Galway boys, most teams' second favourite team would be Mayo because of the bad luck, and you know, you, you would just love to see them getting over the line a wee bit now. Um, Mayo, it it always comes down to for me on Mayo, what Mayo turns up. You know, will they be complacent? Will they be sloppy? Uh, and Horn, you would think, has been there before and has done really well and and has ensured they always got through the end games. I don't think it'll be a classic. I think, as you said, that the Quinlevin and Sweeney will be well marshaled. There's a better defence in Mayo than there was in Cork. And that um, I think that soft softness in Cork uh, contributed to the historics of Bloody Sunday and Tipperary being on song and all those type of things. Uh, it all culminated in, in Tipperary, or uh, you know, rolling over Cork and, and deservedly so. So uh, I think Mayo have uh, again a wee bit like Dublin, a wee bit more ruthless. But again, I don't think it'll be easy. It'll not be straightforward. But to just see O'Connor and that wee bit of experience that Aidan O'Shea has just winning through on the day for, 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 for sorry, Mayo. And I can't see anything else other than a Mayo one. But there's no doubt about it. If Mayo feel that it's just a matter of turning up, given the way Mayo have been historically, they'll be caught. And you could very well see Tip, tip beating them, uh, it's beating a complacent Mayo. But I just think Mayo will want another crack at the dub um, and I think 
that it might be Mayo's last chance with the likes of not Keegan but Colin Boyle um, and boys like that that have been to the well so many times. It might be their last chance um, uh, to have a shot at these dogs and uh, uh, you know, hopefully that they won't be complacent going into any game with them. So, um, yeah, I can't say anything all, all on the Mayo win, uh, but again, Tipperary have been a bonus territory, a bit like Cavan, but listen, it's just hard to look past the stats on this one, you know. And feeling, are Mayo not vulnerable in this game at midfield? Matthew Ryan's a great runner, but not renowned for, I suppose, catching kickouts, and then Conor Loftus is more of linking the play together, and then Tip are probably going to go with three midfielders of Stephen O'Brien, Liam Casey, and O'Reardon. Surely this is somewhere that Tip could get at Mayo. It is, yeah, no, it is, and and look, we know, I suppose, one of one of David Clark's weaknesses, if you want to call them, is 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 his kickouts. You know, you know, he'll get distance on them, but I suppose accuracy maybe maybe not. Um, so look, if he if if Tip push up the pitch and 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 Clark has to kick out over that into the midfield, you know, a big loopy high one. You know, you're right. Tipperary can get at them there because they've got you know really good midfielders. Obviously, O'Reardon's there now, and uh, you know he'll be all familiar with the crummies down in down in um, in Australia where you're getting in around and winning those breaks. So you know they've got you know the likes of Fox and these guys who are brilliant on 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 on, on breaking ball, Kylie. So so they'll want that. So I would hope Tipperary push up right up on Mayo and make them kick it out long. The worst thing that could happen for Tipperary is that you know we saw this in the league game against Galway. David Clark was. You know, their, their full back line were coming out to the 45, been marked by the Galway lads, and he was just dinking the ball into space. And Keegan and Mullen had the pace to go and get it, get a hand pass to the full back, back to the goalie, and then they were in play. So um, Tipperary won't want that because in Crow Park, there's a lot of space. And if he get, starts getting them away, then you've got the likes of Keegan on the ball, you've got Mullen on the ball, you know, who really comfortable footballers, you know, that are able to play it around in their own back line. Like, these are all really good footballers. So, so I would hope Tipperary push up the pitch um, and, and, and make David Clark kick it out long and, and, and high and kind of this big, high loopy ball into the middle of the pitch, make it a war of attrition. And then it's down to break and ball and, 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 and Tipperary will hurt them because they're, they're very good at that. Um, but if Mayo do get the ball, you know, from their kick out, you would hope that you know, Tipperary had their homework done, like because you know Kevin Walsh when when he was over us was 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 brilliant at knowing Mayo and knowing where they're they're vulnerable and knowing where they're not really comfortable kicking. You know, getting Killian O'Connor kicking out on the sideline, the right side. You know, getting other players, Aidan O'Shea shooting from out around the forty, which wouldn't be his thing. Um, you know, so if they've that homework done and they can put these boys into these kind of spaces where they're not comfortable. Um, then, then you know, you, you give them a boxer's chance, but but I think I think I think I think Mayo will are you know are hungry, they're fit, you know they've they've found a lot of good young players, and um, they won't want to let this opportunity go because you know once the hats go into the ring next year and the Donegals, Tyrone's under new management, Kerry's are back with with with, with you know so or Galway's are back, you won't get this chance again. So. To go out and lose to Tipperary now would be a sickener and having to start from scratch again next year would be very difficult for the likes of Mayo. Win this game on Sunday and get to a Christmas All-Ireland um, in the cold, in the rain. And you just don't know. You just don't know. Like, they won't fear Dublin. They'll give them buckets of it and they'll give them oceans of, um, of, of trouble as well. And would you say that any tip should maybe flood the defence here because... Like Mayo, any time they're playing, they're always looking at getting the ball into Killian O'Connor. But if they really f- flood back in front of the Mayo full forward line, Mayo could struggle because they're not really renowned for having long distance shooters. No, and the thing about the thing about um, the thing about Mayo is that the the tend to struggle uh, the tend to struggle when it it's not a very straightforward game. They 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 tend to struggle when it's not pretty purest and. Um, they they are one of the few teams left that that really put an emphasis on attacking and going forward and playing in a kind of an orthodox way, um, and you know they've good ball players, really good uh, players on the ball, which will which should suit them carrying the balls through tackles and stuff like that. But again, I think they do sometimes struggle against those teams that would go ultra defensive. 
uh, teams against you know um, that probably particularly come from the north. So Tipperary need to change. I, I th- can Tipperary be as as open as they were against Cork? I don't think so. Tipperary need to bring something different to the table. And I'm not saying it has to be particularly complicated, but the need to ask questions of Mayo um, that 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 they're comfortable with. So that might mean 13, 14 players behind the ball. And at times, Dublin have had to do that against Mayo to to win through in their particular battles in the past. So it's not about it's it's about getting to a final. And for Tipperary, if Tipperary got to a final, it'd be a massive achievement, huge achievement. So it's about getting through the game and getting the result by any means. Um, so that might be dragging down Mayo to levels that they're not used to. Um, and listen, there there is a case to be made for as as McGuinness proved throughout his tenure, uh, needs must. So if you have to pull fifteen men behind the ball and get through to a final, that's exactly what you do. So temporary need to bring something different that makes makes it very uncomfortable for Mayo to be pure, to be Mayo, to be uh, to go forward, to win a game, to get the ball in direct, uh, to be purest about it. So. Uh, Dublin don't care, you see, they'll play anyway. But I'm not sure how comfortable Mayo are in playing that, you know, mass defence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll see, we'll see. And Finney, in Tipperary's game in the Munster final, it was really based on turnovers. Any time it was a turnover, go direct. And if Mayo, you think they're probably going to aim this weekend to really just hold on to the ball for long periods and not run down a blind alley like Cork did, really. Yeah, no, they will. And they've started to do that this year. You know, obviously their coaches, you know, Horn has kind of changed it. They're into the kind of, they're trying to become a Dublin, whereas they get to the 50, the 45, get to that defensive arc and, you know, mine the ball as much as they can. And the first half against Galway in the championship, they had loads of the ball. They were playing well. They were on top of the back. Uh, but they took pot shots. And I would say, James Horn and their team will look back at that first 20 minutes where they took those pot shots, where they took them from. It was kind of the Mayo of the last few years, I suppose, the Mayo that Galway had been beaten was that, you know, getting frustrated against defensive systems and just taking shots. So um, I think they'll look at that, they'll hold on to it, they'll hold on to it and they'll create that space to get it in around that sweet spot, which is 21, 30 metres out in front of the goals. Whereas, you know, outside of the right, Jim and O'Connor, Killing O'Connor from out on the right hand side, they're one in five, one in six shots. You know they want to play a higher game, a higher percentage game. So I think they'll look at that first twenty minutes. The Galway game will be brilliant for Mayo because they didn't play well. They got through. Uh, they didn't play well. Could have been beaten in the end, uh, but they'll learn loads from it. You know what they've been trying to do and what they did against Leach and Ross Common, uh, and they didn't do against Galway. They'll sit down, they'll analyze it, and they'll say, right, was there one more pass on there? You know, should we have kept it? Why did you shoot from forty five on the on the on the stand and things like that? So I think they'll be very patient. I think they're trying to do that. You know, when McLaughlin and the halfbacks get up to the forward line, they'll they'll lay it off, they'll start moving around and try and get Killian O'Connor and these guys on the loop. So um you'll see a different mail this week uh, than you did against Galway for sure. Danny, would you say the big challenge here for tip is if Keegan and Dirk can go, the Quinlevin and Sweeney don't follow them and pass them on to other men because if Tiff turn over that ball, they want to have Quinlevin and Sweeney inside to punish the mistakes. Well, as a for- so I, I can only say, speaking as a forward, if if you're, you know, and given that uh, Sweeney and Quinlevin are finishers, finishers, pure and simple finishers, as a forward, speaking as a forward, the last thing you want is your man, a sign man marker, good and all that they are going the other direction that's the last thing you want and with the best one in the world you can pass them on but in the but i suppose in the uh, in the fog of war i would say which is championship games and championship matches in the fog of that people get lost and defenders attackers it all gets mixed in uh, especially in Crook park where boys are supposed to be tracking with the best communication in the world people can get lost and then the ball ends up in the net or over the bar. And that's that's that is the discipline that is communicating through a championship match at that level. You might get away with it at club level, but at that level, people you're dealing with really top, top players. They're very mobile and know where they're going. So um 
Quinlan and Sweeney, you would have to give them because they're the finishers, because they're going to you're, they're going to be getting the scores. You would have to be giving them a wee bit of license to pass on players, their markers. The 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 big question is, you know, Keegan or they're so dangerous going forward. That they'll hurt you at the other end. If Quinlan can score a point, Keegan might score goals. You know, so it is a real catch twenty two, and the communication needs to be at the very very top la- cla- uh, top levels. And unfortunately, unless you are, unless you are Dublin with all their talent and organisation and experience of winning, it's just not a matter of turning on that communication. It just doesn't come to you. I think it develops over time, and that my fear would be if they do decide to pass on players that in the fog of war it'll be lost and players will be lost and Mayo will do damage as they can do so you have to give them boys Quinlan and Sweeney license but within reason because you will be punished at the other end from what from what I see where did you say is the winner of this game really going to be around the middle you think I think uh, around the middle um, around the middle is going to be key um, but um, to a certain degree, uh, to a certain degree, and, and when you're getting to a semi final in all our stage in in, in in Croke Park, the way the game has changed, uh, there's a lot more, there's a lot more um, probability in the mix here because kickouts there are much more uh, teams are retaining possession a lot better now than they were historically. Mayo have the ability to go long to Aidan O'Shea, who's a great option. They have the ability to go short to good ball players like Bart, like Keegan. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they, Mayo can do it everywhere. Less is known about this temporary team, to be fair, because they've been operating in Division 3, Division 2 this last few years. And we've seen them over this last couple of games, and they've done brilliant, albeit, you know, the struggle against Limerick. Um, uh, and, and it was a great win against Cork. But again, the consistency, it's hard to tell with the consistency uh, without playing at that top level. So the middle is important these days, but it's not critical. It's not critical. You can actually bypass the middle if you have a really good goalkeeper who will go short and good ball players at the back who carry the ball out. Um, so it's important for tip because they're strong there. But Mayo can play around that. Just... Does it suit, would you say, um, tip perfectly if Aidan O'Shea comes up around the middle because Jimmy Fian's a wing back like and he's playing in full back. He's a natural player to go and attack. So like if O'Shea can go out around the middle, you'd reckon it's gonna suit Tip as well. Um see I think the way Horn plays Aidan O'Shea is he allows him to drift. He allows him to drift, so he'll he'll allow him to drift to midfield at certain times. I think Horns, I think he, people maybe maybe they don't underestimate. I think he's a really top manager actually, and I don't. I think Mayo would recognise that, seeing as this is a second stint in charge. You know, uh, given that you know they had maybe other options available to them. Uh, Rochford done well, um, on on his team, but I think the fact that that Horns back for a second stint. He has facilitated Aidan O'Shea in how he plays. So Aidan can go to full forward, he can drop around to centre half forward, you'll see at times he'll drop him around midfield. And he'll also stra- drop into centre half back when there's pressure on, especially against the teams like Dublin or, and other teams that's attacking strong. So I think he's seen against even against Roscommon, like he's still he's still a lightning rod of attraction for boys to take a shot at Aidan O'Shea. So um I don't think you can I think it's very difficult to man Mark Aidan O'Shea. Tipperary will have to be very, very wary of him wherever he is because he will carry the ball. He's very strong. He'll set up play. If he's far away from goal, so be it. Uh, that, would be my, that would be my influence or that would be my thinking if I was Tipperary to keep him away from the goal because I still think he can draw attackers to him and even hand off a nice pass on the shoulder and stuff like that. So I'd be trying to keep him away from from the from out the field as much as possible, and then getting somebody on them that will put them in the other direction, send them the other direction because somebody is really Eden's very mobile. Don't get me wrong, 
or somebody's very, very nippy and small, they can go the other direction and put them on the back foot. But again, that comes down to a lot more communication and seeing if boys can, can you know, use their best strengths to negate, obviously, Mayo's best strengths. And, and Aidan O'Shea continues to be one of the best players Mayo have. So very difficult man to stop Aidan O'Shea um, and stop his influence. But I think they need to send Aidan in the other direction and as far away from goal as possible. And you'd expect Mayo's experience to count here, but in this championship as well, one noticeable thing really is that the long kickouts are starting to come back into the game and fielding around the middle like a few years ago, it was just all short, but it's really starting to come back now. Yeah, um, and it's great to see. Uh, I think the introduction of the mark um, helps helps that. I'm not a great lover of any introduction. I think the forward marks, marks are nonsense, total nonsense. Um, but the, the, the mark in the middle of the field was acceptable, is acceptable because of, you know, it really, it did not help um, midfielders um, that were going and catching balls and then being surrounded as soon as the, 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 they came to ground. So, you know, the midfield mark has its merits, definitely has its merits. The forward mark is a nonsense said. So it, it's good to see long kickouts, long ball. And, and, and my, in my view, if you're winning the ball tactically, if you're... If you're, you have a kick-out strategy and you're winning the ball 50 metres out from the opposition goal as opposed to 7 or 80, you know, the chances of getting up the field and scoring on a counter-attack or on a quick attack are, are far, far better when you go long. So if you have the ability to secure primary possession, which, Don, which was Donegal's stance, ironically, and... Um, uh, it was one of the... Because the six-footers all over the half-forward line and in midfield... The strangest thing um, uh, this year that I seen was in that final where Donegal weren't winning the primary ball there uh, and Calvin were out muscling in there. Um, so there's obviously something in that where, where Donegal lost the game against Calvin because they weren't winning the primary ball there and they weren't as good as they have been or they're capable of being. So Mayo are strong in that area. They, they haven't been lacking, put it that way, historically. Uh, temporary, less known, but again, have seemed to have held their own in, in that area. So it'll be interesting. It's an interesting, it'll be an interesting dynamic, but you would have to think that Mayo will hold the strength, or you would have to think based on their experience and all the rest of it. So Clark, as you, Finian, you had talked about, he hasn't a great kick out, but he has something there, that obviously, organisationally and tactically, where he has the ability to go short and obviously pick his man out long. So it hasn't been a massive issue for Mayo. Um, so I don't see it rearing its head now. Um, I think it will probably be okay. Nobody's Stephen Cluxon or nobody's Dublin. But Mayo, I don't think they're faltering hugely with a kick-out strategy. And is it just their experience really in the final quarter that will probably tell you? Yeah, well, listen, Killian O'Connor's been doing it for, for a long time. And you've other guys that's come come in there. Damage, uh, damage there as well. His brother, which helps. Um, um, and you've other guys that come in and have performed well this year. So you, you would you would think that at that stage, at that level, with their level of experience, you would think that Mayo have enough to get through and tip. This is I say bonus territory for the likes of Tipperary and Calvin. Not to say that they're, 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 they've merited being there and they've won through on absolute merit and guts and determination and skill. Uh, but you would think, think with the prize on, on offer and a granola crack of the doubles for Mayo, you would think that Mayo would have enough experience and ability and skill right throughout their team to pull them over the line. And the thing about Mayo is, and it's been levelled at them, do they have enough forwards to win an All-Ireland title? And they have went to the well with Dublin over a number of years. Um, whether they can still keep doing that is the big question. But this might be the last you'll see of this current Mayo crop. Um, and if they don't get through this year, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if they'll ever do it then. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see. But that's all for a preview of the semi-finals um, coming up this weekend. Thanks so many for your time, Danny.